Okay, so let's look at how to take integrals by completing the square. And before we deal with the integral, let's just do a quick review of completing the square. If you are already comfortable with how to complete squares such as these, I'll look at the description. I have um, links to skip on to the later portions of the video. All right, so this is the way that I like to complete the square. The first thing I do is I group up the first two terms, or the x squared and the x term, or the squared and linear term. I'll factor out any leading coefficient. In this example, leading coefficient is 1, so I don't need to worry about that. And then to make a perfect square trinomial, I will take the remaining middle term, divide it by 2, and square it. Uh, negative 8 over 2 is negative 4, squared is 16. Uh, in another video, I will explain why we do this um, and why this works a little bit more, but that means that this will be x squared minus 8x, and I can put in a plus 16 and a minus 16 because that's the same thing as adding 0, doesn't change the problem, I sell this plus 5. And we chose this 16 because this x squared minus 8x plus 16 is now a perfect square trinomial. It is x minus 4 squared. x squared minus 4x minus 4x is negative 8x um, plus 16. This minus 16 has to come out. And I don't need to multiply it by anything because there's a 1 here. So I'd have minus 16 plus 5, which leads me to the final completed square, x minus 4 squared minus 11. A slightly more difficult problem is if I have a leading coefficient that's not 1, but it works very much the same way. So I group up the y squared and the y term. I factor out the a, so I get negative 3, and I'm left with y squared, pl not plus anymore because I factor out a negative, minus 4y, minus 4. I'll do the same thing, so I take this b term, which is actually sort of b over a, and I will do negative 4 over 2 squared. Negative 4 divided by 2 is 2, squared is 4. So I will rewrite this as negative 3, y squared minus 4y, and then I will plus 4, minus 4. I'm always going to add it first because when I have a perfect square trinomial, when I square it, I'll always get a positive term here. Um, and then I have the minus 4 out here at the very end. And in here, we did this work because y squared minus 4y plus 4 is equal to y minus 2 squared. And if you haven't noticed, this minus 2 will always be whatever this was. Negative 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Here's the tricky part for this problem, though. This negative 4 has to come out, but as I bring it out, the negative 3 would have been multiplied to everything, so it actually comes out as a plus 12. I actually end up doing negative 3 times negative 4 when I bring it out. And I still have the minus 4 here. I have the negative 3 here. And now I can clean it up. I have negative 3, y minus 2 squared, plus 8. So that's a little quick review of completing the square. I'll put up a video, I don't know when, more fully explaining why we do all this stuff and showing some more things that can happen. Now, let's look at how we take integrals by completing the square. So, this should happen if I see, so, this can be used, possibly, if you have a quadratic in the denominator or 
in a root. And the process is this. First thing you do is complete the square. The second thing you do is you basically just do the trig substitution. And so this covers the rest. What we did for trig substitutions a few videos ago, we do here. And recall for trig substitutions, we had this rule where if I had a squared plus x squared, I would let x equal, not just tangent, a tangent. Well, in here, I'm going to have a slight difference. So I'm not just going to have x squared. I'm going to have what I got from completing the square. So if I have a squared plus, I'll say, b of x, all squared, or, and this is the hard part as well, it could be in different order. b of x squared plus a squared, then I will let b of x equal a tangent theta. And if I have a squared minus b of x squared, or, and this is the more often way you'll see it, or the more common way to see this, negative b of x squared plus a squared, then I will let b of x equal a sine theta. And if I have b of x squared minus a squared, or if I have negative a squared plus b of x squared, then I will let b of x equal a secant theta. So same rules as before, it's just not going to be simply a variable. Um, now I'll show two quick examples. So they'll help explain what I mean by this. I know it might be a little bit um, obtuse, a little bit strange just looking at this. So here's the first example. I see a quadratic inside a square root. So let me complete that square. I'm just going to do that to the side. So um, negative x squared minus 6x minus 8. I will group up these two terms, factor out a negative, so I get x squared plus 6x, take b, so I have 6 that's over 2, b over 2 squared, 6 over 2 is 3, squared is 9, so now I will have negative x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9 minus 8. This part right here is uh, the same thing as x plus 3 squared. And when I take out this minus 9, I have to multiply it by the negative, so I get a plus 9 which gives me the completed square, x plus 3 squared plus 1. So let me write that out. So this will equal integral. And I'll bring the 3 out to the front as well. I can do that. 1 over the square root of, sorry, there should be negatives there, negative x plus 3 squared plus 1 dx. And I have this negative variable function squared plus a squared. And so that means I'm going to follow this right here. Let b of x equal a sine theta because the variable part is negative. The constant part is positive. That's the way to look at it. So I will let x plus 3 equal, and a in this case is 1, so I can just let this equal 1 sine theta. Do the derivative and see that dx, the derivative of 3, 0, equals cosine theta d theta. And I can substitute this stuff in. So I will get 
that equals, I still have the 3, integral of 1 over the square root of, I'll replace the x plus 3 with sine, so I have a negative sine squared theta plus 1. And I can replace the dx with cosine theta d theta, so times cosine theta d theta. I still have the 3 out front. I can bring the cosine to the numerator and get cosine theta in the numerator. In the denominator, negative sine squared theta plus 1 is the same as 1 minus sine squared theta. That's cosine squared theta. And I can see I have cosine theta divided by the square root of cosine squared, which is just cosine. And so I get 3 integral of 1 d theta. The integral of 1 d theta is theta plus c. And to finish it off, I just go back. I need to solve for theta. So if x plus 3 equals sine theta, then by taking the arc sine or the inverse sine, I'll get that theta equals inverse sine of x plus 3. Substitute that back in here to get 3 arc sine of x plus 3 plus c. So that's a pretty straightforward problem. Let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated right here. And I see I have a quadratic in the denominator. Um, I don't have a different good way to do this problem. I might be able to take out a 3. We'll deal with that shortly. Um, but let's dive right in. So I'll, I'll do this maybe not the smartest way. And just complete this square. So I have 3r squared minus 30r plus 87. Group up the first two terms and factor out a 3. r squared minus 10r, still have a plus 87. Take this b over a term, negative 10, divide by 2, and square it. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5, squared is 25. So that gives me now 3 r squared minus 10r. I have plus 25 minus 25 and then I have plus 87. This right here is a perfect square trinomial. It is equal to r minus 5 squared. When I bring this out, I need to multiply it by the 3, so I get negative 75. And now to sort of clean this up, I will end up with 3 r minus 5 squared plus 12. And we'll go from there. So I have really the integral of 1 divided by 3 r minus 5 squared plus 12 dr. And I can see in the denominator I have a common factor of 3, so I can actually pull out a 1 third and deal with the integral of 1 over r minus 5 squared plus 4 dr. And this is where some people had some trouble when I was showing in class they see an r minus 5 here and they think, okay, I have variable minus constant that's going to be secant. That's not what we're looking at. We have the variable part squared and the constant part, and these are both positive out front. So I will use the one where they are both positive, this a squared plus function squared or function squared plus a squared, and I'll let it equal a tangent. So for this, I will let r minus 5 equal, well a squared is 4, so a is 2, so I'll do 2 tangent theta, and that means that dr will equal 2 secant squared theta 
d theta. And I can substitute this stuff in and get one third integral of one over r minus five, I replace with two tangent and I square it so I get four tangent squared theta plus four. And then I have times dr, which is the same thing as two secant squared theta d theta. Okay, let me sort of mark this off so I don't mix this into there. Okay, so now I have some factoring to do. I see that uh, I have a four in the denominator that I can factor out, and that will give me a four times three, which is 12 in the denominator. And I have a two in the numerator that I can bring out, so I'll bring that out to the front. I can put the secant squared up to the numerator, so secant squared theta. And in the denom denominator, I have tangent squared theta plus one, all d theta. Now, tangent squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. So that will give me two over 12 is one sixth. One sixth integral of secant squared theta divided by secant squared theta d theta. The secant squareds cancel, and I get 1 sixth integral of 1 d theta, which is, uh, I'll say theta over 6 plus c. And now I just need to finish it off, so I need to know what theta is. I'll go back here, and I will solve for theta, so I'll divide both sides by 2. So that means that the tangent of theta equals r minus 5 over 2, and then take the inverse tangent to get that theta equals arctan of r minus 5 over 2, and substitute that in here. So I will have the inverse tangent of r minus 5 over 2 all over 6 plus c. I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll try to get back to you.